entertained? Are you not entertained? Yes, Maximus, we are entertained, but this video might change that perception. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths, the series that finds the biggest myths that people actually believe and dispels them one by one. I say to you that this day you shall be with him in paradise. In this installment, we're dispelling the five most widely believed myths about one of history's most fabled professions. Many of these misconceptions come from movies, and while they often present a fairly accurate depiction of gladiator life, creative liberties are of course taken in the entertainment industry. You must kill your name before he kills you. Myth number five, thumbs down meant death. According to the movies, the emperor in attendance would choose whether the defeated gladiator would live or die, using the thumbs up or thumbs down gesture. In reality, historians aren't entirely sure what the mercy or finish him gestures were, but they all seem certain that these were not them. The confusion stems from the ambiguity of the Latin terms used to describe the gesture, and the lack of contemporaneous visual representations of the scene. When an emperor was not in attendance, the crowd served as a reaper, as the volume of cheers determined the verdict. I was the best because the crowd loved me. Win the crowd, and you'll win your freedom. Historians also surmise that gestures other than the thumbs down were used, including a closed fist with two protruding fingers to signal mercy. Myth number four, there were no women gladiators. This is more of an unspoken assumption than a myth, but because female gladiators are often absent in media portrayals, we don't usually associate them with Colosseum combat. But women fought as legitimate gladiators. There were many fights featuring female combatants, and some were given larger roles in events as they proved themselves to be gifted fighters. A notable gladiatrix was Mevia, who was reportedly pitted against animals in incredibly entertaining bouts. There is also an account of a long spectacular fight between two women, Amazon and Achillea, which ended in a draw. Being more of a novelty, women often fought handicapped male opponents, but these spectacles ended around 200 AD after Emperor Severus banned them from the games, though some still fought illegally. <laughs> Myth number three, Christians were thrown to the lions in gladiator events. This idea comes from images of early Christian martyrs, while Christians were indeed executed as part of Roman rule, there are zero accounts of a Christian being thrown to the lions, or being involved in any gladiatorial sacrifices. It's all bullshit! All of it! In fact, most Christian executions happened at the dawn of the empire, and by the time gladiation became popular, Christians were free citizens. Also, animals were made mostly to fight each other, or be slain in hunting competitions against inferior opponents, like emperors who decided to participate. <laughs> Some historians contend that this myth was used as pro-Christian propaganda, as a way to glorify the persecution that Christianity faced during its rise to power. <laughs> myth number two, gladiators were always slaves. This can also be seen in movies and on TV. While the solid majority of people were forced into this profession through slavery, there were citizens, even emperors themselves, who chose to fight of their own free will. <laughs> This is because gladiators were the world's first sports heroes. To be a gladiator was to get instant fame and glory. They were beloved, renowned, idolized. They were action figures. I'm an action figure! There were billboards, and the best of them even got sponsorships. They routinely filled the Colosseum that was estimated to have held as many as 80,000 spectators, along with 400 other arenas throughout the empire. People even enrolled in gladiator schools, which were abundant in Rome to the tune of 100 institutions. Your tears, your blood, your pathetic lives forged into something of worth. There were few other ways a plebeian could get noticed, let alone become a celebrity or a sex symbol. Spartacus, champion of Capua, step forward. Myth number one, gladiators always fought to the death. The best gladiators were prized possessions that the managers and promoters could not afford to lose. Win the crowd. Therefore, not every fight was to the death. Referees were instated to stop major fights when a person got wounded, so as to allow the fighter the full milking of his worth. Of course, this safeguard was only in place for certain events, and the toll of the occupation severely weathered the fighters. It is estimated that one in five matches resulted in death, and that most gladiators died by the age of 25. 
The annual death count of gladiators during the Roman reign was 5,000. Multiply that by 700 years and you have 3.5 million deaths from just one sport. Makes hockey seem tame, doesn't it? Oh, doctor, what are they doing? So how many of these myths did you believe? I fear the glory that was Rome will never fully be reached again, Marcus. Here's what Google searches think about gladiators. Do gladiators have tattoos? Were gladiators vegan? Are gladiator sandals still in? For more thumbs up top 10s and thrown to the lines top 5s, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.